my god, this is so boring. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So, today, I'm going to be showing you how I do a score reduction. This is something that many people have asked me to do for a couple of years, and I've always said, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, I'm working on a video. And truth is, I never <laughs> was working on a video of this, um, but now I am. So please forgive me, uh, and let's get right into this. Now, I've got this little setup here with my laptop and my iPad. Um, for a couple of different reasons. Now, on the iPad, I'm going to have the score excerpt that we're going to be reducing, and I'm going to use it to um, draw and sort of visualize the way that I think about this uh, as we go through it. And then on the laptop, I've got my uh, copy of Sibelius that I'm then going to be uh, inputting the notes for the actual score reduction itself. Um, and all of this, I'm going to try to edit together so that you can see everything. I'm not sure how it's going to look in post, so we'll see about that. Um, but other than that, I mean, I got to say, this is like the most boring thing ever. It, it, it's sort of like, it's like watching paint dry. Um, and so that's kind of part of the reason I didn't want to make this video to begin with. But I mean, I, I hope you get something out of it. And it's uh, at least mildly entertaining, um, which I guess... Is kind of on me. So, what else was I going to say? Quick plug, um, there's now a Film Score Analysis Facebook page, uh, and if you haven't already liked that page, I'm gonna need you to get on that. Here's the deal. Um, I've been posting little snippets of uh, score reductions, such as the one that we're going to make now, on that page daily, okay? So every single day I've been just doing a quick little score reduction uh, and posting it up, you can uh, make requests. I'm able to very quickly uh, respond to those requests. So uh, if you're into that sort of thing, and I know a lot of you are, okay, go like that page. I'm going to put the link uh, up there and also down there, okay? Uh, cool. So on the iPad, boom, going to put the iPad up on the screen. You're going to see uh, a page from the Raiders March from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark by John Williams, okay? And we're just gonna reduce the last couple measures uh, of this theme. And so here is how I look at this, okay? And, and I'm gonna kinda do some markings here. Um, the first thing that I'm looking for is any sort of pattern. You know, are there any instruments that are playing the same thing as other instruments? What things immediately jump out to me visually as being uh, similar because that's kind of ultimately what this is, is you're taking all of the redundancy of the, you know, multiple instruments that may be playing the same thing and reducing that down to the sort of lowest common denominator, uh, that you can. So for example, I'm seeing that the woodwinds, uh, and the strings, particularly the high woodwinds and the high strings, uh, are playing, uh, more or less the same thing. Also the, what is this, probably the glockenspiel. Um, and I'm also seeing, for example, that the brass is all more or less playing the same thing, these big giant chords. Uh, and in this case, uh, you know, you'll notice that they're all playing different notes, these brass instruments, um, but that doesn't matter. What we're looking for is uh, purely rhythmic, um, because in the case of these chords, they're still playing together, even if they're playing different notes. And so by definition, all that really means is that they're playing the same rhythm. So that's what I tend to look for. Um, what else? We've got the, these little bass notes uh, all around here. Um, and just to kind of visualize this further into what I like to call things, <laughs> not the most descriptive word. Um, but what I mean by things is purely just different elements of the track. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight these uh, as all being part of the same thing, okay? Uh, and that looks like it for that. We'll go ahead and mark off the horns, trumpets. 
Now, I wouldn't normally do this, all, all of this highlighting, because I've sort of gotten used to doing this. Um, but maybe this is something you want to do, just to kind of train your eyes and your brain a little bit. Um, I'm doing it purely to show you what I'm thinking in my head. So you're seeing I'm just highlighting uh, what's different. And so, you know, we talked about, you know, the brass is all playing the same thing. We've got these bass notes here and the uh, bassoons, the tuba, the timpani, etc. So we're, we're highlighting them as all being uh, part of the same thing, okay? Um, and then we've got little things like this uh, harp gliss and the percussion. I don't really consider that as as um, a thing like with everything else. It's sort of an extra additional uh, or orchestration choice made on top. Um, and so, you know, this is all fine and dandy to look at. It's still kind of messy, probably not uh, ideal for most of you. So this is when we switch over to Sibelius and start actually inputting these notes as a reduction so that it's not quite as, um, <laughs> what would you call that? Kind of looks like a piece of art. Very attractive, but not practical. <laughs> oh my God, this is so boring. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. Okay. So now on the laptop, I'm going to go ahead and bring up Sibelius. Uh, I do have a template for this kind of work, which I use for all of my videos that you all watch. <sighs> if it would load. <sighs> if it would load. Here we go. Okay, so this is my template, and you'll see here that I've got this middle uh, piano grand staff in the middle with the treble and the bass clef. Uh, I've got an extra bass clef below that and two extra treble clefs above and a percussion staff at the bottom. You certainly do not have to do this this way. You can do it however you want. Uh, I do it this way for a couple different reasons. Uh, one, I try to keep the primary elements of the, the piece, meaning the, you know, foundational chordal elements uh, and the melody in the middle here, in the piano staff, uh, if the arrangement lends itself to that. It doesn't always. Um, but if possible, I like to keep those things in the middle so that if I, if I want to, I can sort of just focus in on that middle uh, grand staff and actually play that stuff on the piano, kind of get the harmonies and the, the rhythms under my fingers, so to speak, um, without having to worry about the extra, you know, 16th note runs and everything that like you don't want to play, like no one wants to play that. So, um, you know, just enough that you can kind of get the gist of the track um, from those two staves. And then, you know, we've got all this extra fluff kind of fanning outwards uh, and also, you know, you'll notice we've got the bass here towards the bottom and the treble up towards the top. I also try to arrange the reductions in such a way that the lowermost element of the track is at the bottom um, and the highest elements are at the top. Um, but again, it's not... I would call it far from being an exact science, so to speak. So again, you can do this However you'd like, I certainly will not get upset if you choose to not follow my format. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this up in accordance to what we need. Right. Okay, so I'm going to start with the brass chords. Um, having listened to this track many times, I know that that is kind of the predominant element of this section of the piece. Um, doesn't really matter where you start, but got to start somewhere. So, um, 
This is where it gets super fun. Now all I'm doing is looking at the, the brass that we've highlighted and just writing down the exact notes um, from top to bottom or bottom to top. Um, that's it. Like I'm not thinking about it any more than that. It's just getting the notes down um, correctly. And of course, you have to do some transposing on the fly, which you should all learn, you should all learn to do. Um, it'll make this go much faster. But I'm not, again, I'm not thinking about this uh, too much. Okay, so that's it for those chords. I think I'm going to throw in some of these articulation markings. Super important. You start to get a feel for what articulations are appropriate for different styles of music. Kind of something which is overlooked by a lot of people, I think. Um, okay, let's go ahead and do the bass notes. Pretty easy. Copy paste when you can. God, make this make this easy I mean I think maybe some of you are were imagining that this is more complicated than it actually is and I'm here to tell you that that is not the case the whole point of this is to make things simpler for you let's not forget that um, octave doublings I try to keep those in if I can um, if it doesn't make things too ridiculous looking um, because it sort of helps you get a visual feel for w what you're actually hearing uh, as far as the arrangement goes, the sounding pitches. So, you know, the contrabass trans or, uh, sounds an octave lower, so I try to show that. Not always. Again, not a science. Sometimes I just forget to. Probably going to miss a few of these markings. Please forgive me but I'm also trying to, you know, not have this take forever. <clears throat> okay, I think that's it for bass notes. Now we will add in the blue over here on our score. I need some coffee. A few moments later. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Um, right, so I think that's it for the notes. We can go ahead and get rid of this uh, lowermost bass clef. Since we didn't put anything there, I do try to uh, get rid of as much of the white space as I can just to make it, you know, as simple to look at as humanly possible. So go ahead and drag this back since nothing happens there. You don't have to go through this trouble, but this is just something I like to do. And we can get rid of this percussion, this empty percussion stuff at the beginning. Okay, um, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this extra crap that clutters up the screen. So, um, this is the finished score reduction. Now, what we also need to do is add in the instrument names. Um, because now that we've gotten rid of the redundancy in the score, we still want to know what instruments are playing what thing. Uh, and so, you know, kind of becomes important to go ahead and add that back in. <clears throat> 
So I'm going to do that very quickly for the woodwinds. We can say woodwinds, flutes, clarinets, and then see, we actually have a difference, a difference in articulation. Um, so for the violins, they're actually playing tremolo, whereas the uh, woodwinds are playing staccato. So in this case, I would say violins in parentheses, uh, tremolo, just to, just to say, you know, they're playing the same notes, but they're kind of playing them slightly differently. Um, and then as we add more instruments to this, I will just write, you know, plus oboes, um, plus extra clarinet. For example, over here now, we then add the English horn. So I'll do the same thing. <clears throat> um, harp gliss, that's obvious. And do the bass instruments quickly. Not gonna worry too much about formatting. You guys all get the gist. Snare drum. And timpani. What note is that playing? Uh, C on C down here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, what else do I tend to do? Oh, uh, another thing you can do is I tend to highlight the main thing um, just by doing this. Um, I really wouldn't in this case. I tend to anymore only highlight like main themes or like melodies, which this isn't. So I'm going to get rid of it. Um, but that's it. Uh, that's the score reduction, folks. Now you can all uh, do your own, uh, I guess, if you haven't already been doing that. Uh, which brings me to my next point, okay? If you want to learn how to uh, efficiently read and comprehend full orchestral scores, you're not going to learn that from watching my videos, okay? What you get out of my videos is you see the, the music in a reduced, concise, uh, easily comprehensible form, which is the reduction um, and all the accompanying analysis. And so you can very easily look at that and extrapolate as much data as you need to as a composer to then move on and, and create with that information. What it doesn't give you is the full score. And so if all you do is watch these videos or you look at score reductions, when you actually go to look at a full score, you're going to be lost, you know, because you go to look at these 20 to 30, you know, sometimes upwards of 40 staves, much, much different than looking at a score reduction. And the only way that you are going to learn these different patterns, these, you know, when you look and you see a certain visual layout, you say, oh, that's that thing. I know what this is. I know what's happening here. I know what this is going to sound like. You know, I had a, I had a teacher in high school who, my band and orchestra teacher, who told me he could, like, look at a score like this and immediately hear what it would sound like in his head. You know, it's like he could read a score like a book. Okay, so if that's what you're after, if that's what you want to be able to do, you know, be able to efficiently read these scores, you have to sit down with the score, okay? And you can try to study it like this. You don't have to do the reduction, but I, I highly recommend that you do because it, it God, it, it really helps kind of drill, drill the information into your head. But you have to do it. You have to sit down and do the reduction, go through the transition process of full score to reduction. You know, if you, if you just look at the reduction, you miss the other half of it right? That's my recommendation to you. Um, and, and you don't even have to spend that much time on it. You know, maybe a lot of people, they feel like the time that they spend writing music is super valuable, you know, and, and maybe it is, but 
you know, you don't have to, to reduce an entire piece of music like I do on the, on the channel. You can do what we just did, which is four measures, you know, and it took, what, maybe 20 minutes, you know, and, and that was with the additional formatting and stuff for the, for the YouTube video, which you don't have to do. You can just throw the notes down say, oh, okay, I, I get it and move on, you know, take maybe 10, 15 minutes. Pick a, sec a section of a piece of music that you like, you know, like, oh, I, I like this, but I don't understand how it works. Okay, well, get the score, sit down, 10, 15 minutes in the morning before you leave to go to work, cup of coffee, you know, and just do it. Great. Do it a hundred times and you'll become a, a god like me. We're not worthy! We're not Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, hey, if you're not already uh, following the Facebook page, again, link is in the description. Go like the page. I'm going to be posting up this little score reduction snippet along with many, many others on the daily. Guys, I'm doing half of the work for you, but I got to tell you, you should be doing score reductions daily too. Helps strengthen the mind. Makes you a boss, you know? Don't want to be a dweeb forever. I'm afraid many of you may be destined for such a <laughs> such a path in life, you know? Don't be a dweeb. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, you dweebs. Thanks for watching. Kisses.